give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap. I think we can do better than that on Saturday night. Come on, let the devil know you're in the house right now. I don't know what you need. God already knows. And I want you to know He's got a miracle. And your name is on it. If you believe it, come on and give God glory. And we give God glory. And I give God the honor. How many happy people out here at Gospel Tabernacle? I want y'all to make some noise act like you're happy. Amen. Act like you're happy. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We're so happy to be at Gospel Tabernacle tonight, this evening, to celebrate the anniversary of Pastor Thurston and Evangelist Little sitting over here. Let's stand and reverence these great people of God. The Lord is worthy. And I give God praise, glory, and honor. For bringing us over this dangerous highway tonight yes. through the seen and unseen danger. Yes. We yes. certainly bless God, amen, for Mother Burroughs. Yes. Looking so charming over there. Yes. To God yes. be the glory. Yes. Thank y'all for Elder McBride and Evangelist McBride. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all want to clap? Well, we're going to learn how to clap our hands for somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all may not have never heard me or seen me before, but this is just who I am. And I tell people I don't try to be anybody else because it takes me a lifetime trying to be myself. Y'all ain't talking in here. Hallelujah. Thank God for Pastor Patterson, Co-Pastor Cindy Patterson from the Lamb of God. Amen. The evangelist right is in the house. Thank you, Lord. Teacher Gaddy. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Blanche Hooks being in the midst. She's one of my followers every Saturday night on our Hour of Power. Amen. On Facebook, we thank God for her. Thank God for all the ministers here that I may not know by name. Every officer of God's for Tabernacle. Pastor Dickey in the back. We bless God for the man of God. For every officer that I may not know by name, I thank God for you, you, and you. I thank God for my sister-in-law, Minister Deborah Hardison, giving such a warm introduction tonight. Hallelujah. For those who came with us from Emmanuel Temple, some are yet coming. It's been a lot of things going on, and some are yet trying to get it. So we bless God. We're praying that they will have a safe journey here to Gospel Tabernacle. My husband went to... Apostle Benjamin Davis' funeral in Cameron, North Carolina. A very dear friend of mine was passed, and his funeral was at 2 o'clock, and they're leaving out of there. He called me while we we're on the road trying to get back to Sharon. So we'll see if he's able to put his head in the door. But if he doesn't, he made sure he has some money on his table. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all just ain't talking. Thank God, we thank God. We're here to honor these two great people of God. People that I didn't have to learn to love. I have a problem when we're in the church and we say, I had to learn to love. But when we're in God, we shouldn't have to learn. We automatically know how to love because God is love. Oh, uh, yeah, y'all talking real good now. I think I'm getting the right people. God is love. And we love these two people of God. I wouldn't trade them for nothing in the world. When I got a call from Evangelist Little, um, excuse me, Evangelist Eva May Wright, and she told me that Pastor wanted me to come on this night to do his anniversary. I said, little old me? 
amen, to preach on his anniversary. And I tell you, I was just humble. And I was blessed to know that he desired for me to come to be his preacher for tonight. Could have chosen anybody, but he thought enough a little on me to come to say whatever the Lord gives me. And I thank God for him. He's been on the battlefield for a long time. He didn't start yesterday. And we need men of his caliber that's out proclaiming, preaching, teaching the word of God. If the young folks would only listen, y'all ought to hear me out there. And, and on social media, the young people would only listen to the seasoned people. We, we, we could go somewhere. So I honor this great man of God. Come on, give him another hand clap. I thank God for his darling wife, Evangelist Little. I love her dearly. She and I went to school together. We are classmates. We played together. Amen. We stayed with each other around the schoolhouse. And we were growing up. And we've just been friends all of our lives. And God bless her to come into our ministry at Emmanuel Temple. She got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I mean with the real Holy Ghost. Y'all don't know about the real Holy Ghost. Get messed up. But she got filled with the real Holy Ghost. And let me tell you, Pastor Pounds, she got saved. She started working. Wherever she found her hands to do, she worked, she worked, she worked. And I tell you, when well, some people leave the church and cry, some people leave the church and say, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but when Evangel left the church, I think everybody cried. <laughs> Now one of our hard workers was gone. She worked. She's a laborer. And I know God has sent her here to Gospel Tabernacle. And I know that she's laboring beside her husband, doing all that she can do for the glory of God. I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to go into the Word of God. But I remember, I'm, I'm reaping some of her the benefits of her being a member of our church. Won't go into everything. But I remember this particular time, our church had just burned. And God had placed in my heart about going on the radio. Amen. And the Lord had said, it's time now for your voice to be heard on the radio. And he was telling me what to do, writing letters, and people would give, was going to give me money. Yeah. And I said, Lord, that's kind of contradictory because the church burned and, and we need money. So I didn't have anybody to talk to, but I called my friend, I called my daughter. And I began to tell her what the Lord said. And she said, I'm going to tell you one thing. She said, you go ahead and you do what the Lord is telling you because the Lord will make a way. I tell y'all, I, I started sending out letters. I sent out letters and people responded and they sent me money. And I stayed on the road. I stayed on two different radio stations about 10 years. Never had to go in my pocket and pay a dime. Because I did what she told me to do. Amen. Told me to go ahead and do what the Lord telling me to do. And God supplied my need. So let's give her another big hand clap. Amen. I just can't tell nothing. I'm just talking about them. Because when, see, when you live something, it's not hard to talk about something. You know, we don't live now. People got to get up and lie. God, amen. Your temple coming in. Amen. amen. We're going to pray and go into this word so we get y'all out on Saturday night. And I do thank God for everyone who's on social media who are tuning in at this time for the radio for our broadcast. We're broadcasting live tonight from the Gospel Tabernacle. This will substitute us for our hour of power. So I do invite you to like, share, and invite your friends. Amen. To watch this broadcast. Let us pray. Father God, in the most precious name of your son, Jesus. It's one more time that you have allowed your woman servant to come to stand before your people. Yes. Now, Father God, as I stand, I decrease. Amen. And I ask that you would increase in me even the more. Yes. Father God, let me walk in the anointing Amen. that you have placed upon my life to preach, teach, and to minister yes. the word of God. Yes. 
Now, Father God, I call for my ministering angels who have walked with me down throughout this life. And God, I call for the one who stands on my left hand and the one who stands on my right. And I say, breathe upon me this night. Father God, I ask that they will hold me up and take me through in this place. Now, God, while they are coming, I position the other angels on the four walls of this great church. And God, I command them this night to be ready at a moment's notice to this verse your healings, blessings, salvation, prosperity, whatever in this house right now. They got shut down. Now, God, I go into this atmosphere. And just in case Satan has desired to set up this service, I go up now, God, and I render every one of his weapons null and void. And I tell that old devil on tonight that it will not work. Now I say, Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this house. Holy, Holy Spirit, have thine own way. Holy, Holy Spirit, we can do nothing on our own. But it's in you that we live and that we breathe and we have our being. Now, Father God, I commit this service over into your hands. For you do all things well. Now, God, however you choose to use this vessel of clay, I will not take your glory. I won't take your honor and I won't take your praise. But I leave it at the feet of Jesus this night. And I say, God, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the Redeemer Lord say amen. amen. Put your hands together. Put them together. Put them together. Put them together. Oh gosh, gosh, gosh. Put them together. And give God praise. Amen. We thank God. We're going into the word of God on tonight. Get your Bibles. Now do ask if we have any water to drink. A little water. And I'll put it down here on the podium. We're reading tonight to get your Bibles, and if you're able to stand with me, yes. please stand. We're going to 2 Corinthians, yes. the second chapter, and the 14th verse. 2 yes. <clears throat> Corinthians, mm -hmm. the second chapter, and the 14th verse. I'm giving you a minute to get it. Thank God for our musicians coming in. From the part of the celebration for the baby and all my other honeybees that have come in from Emmanuel Temple Church on tonight. All right, 2 Corinthians, the second chapter and the 14th verse. When I have one verse, I do ask that we read it in unison and then let us read it collectively. Everybody got it? Amen. Let's read. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. You may be seated. I've been in prayer, meditation, consecration, concentrating on this particular night, this 13th pastoral anniversary, asking God what to deliver. For Pastor Thurston's and um, Evangelist Little's 13th pastoral anniversary. And I thank God, amen. I put my put a lot of time into what I do. Don't no boast or brag, but I don't like to give people something half put together. I don't like to give anybody a half done meal. Hallelujah. So I put a lot of thought and I put a lot of prayer into this night. Because I say, God, for him to want me to come. I got to have some meat when I go. Amen. So tonight I've come to decree unto this house what the Lord has given unto me. Right. And I oftentimes say I speak to the atmosphere grabbers. And if you're an atmosphere grabber in here tonight, you can grab this word for yourself. All right. All right. Let me read that clause. I'm pulling from the first part of that verse. Now thanks be unto God, which always, that means forever and ever and ever, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Now this is what the Lord gave me as I began to seek him. I was at work and God dropped this in my heart one day. And I want everybody to look over there at Pastor Little. And I want you to point your hands toward them. And let's decree this message topic to them. You have won again. You have won again. You have won again. 
again. You have won again. Now I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have won again. If you believe it, lay your hands on yourself and say, I have won again. Now if you really believe it, I want you to give God a hand clap like you believe you have won again. You have won again. There's no room for doubt. There's no room for error. There's no room to second guess anything because Paul says God always causes us. Who we talking about? I don't know about you. We talking about little old me. Tell your name. He's talking about me. Always cause us to triumph. Paul is talking to the believers. How many believers in gospel tabernacle tonight? He's talking to you. The contemporary English version, the first clause says, listen, I am grateful that God makes it possible for Christ to lead us to victory. How many of y'all grateful tonight? Where are my grateful people? Grateful that God makes it possible for Christ to lead us in victory. When I thought about this, God began to deal with my spirit. And I thought about Pastor Little. And I thought about all the trials and tests that he had been enduring in his lifetime. His life has not been a bed of roses. See, sometimes people think when you sign up to be a preacher, you sign up to be saved, you think your life is going to go easy. Well, let me be the first one to tell you, everything ain't going to be easy. I'm talking to the real people right now. See, I'm not talking to the play play people, but I'm talking to the real people. Well, sometimes we get saved and we want to paint a picture and tell everybody, come on, give your life to Christ and everything's going to be all right. Well, somebody just told you a lie. Yeah, I said they told you a lie. I believe I got the right house. I'm in the right house. Because everything is not going to be easy. You're going to have your share of battles. You will have your share of trials. You will have your share of ups and downs. You're going to have your share. This will not be tax exempt season. You don't have any babies to claim on this. I believe I got the right house. You not going to be exempt. You're going to go through some stuff. And I know the devil thought that he had passed a little. He thought he wasn't going to make it. But you know what? God said no. Oh, uh, y'all ought to clap your hands right there. Don't nobody do nothing yet. God said no. God said no. And I believe and I understand, amen, that God said no. I believe that God said Pastor Little was going to win again. Y'all ought to want God to say it over your life that you're going to win again. Say, I don't know what it's telling y'all, but it let me know. I'm going to win again, baby. I am going to win. What you must understand is that when Jesus says yes, can't nobody say no. And if they have the nerve and the audacity to say no, God's sovereignty will overrule them every time. The witchcraft worker can't kill you. The one step on your porch won't kill you. That diamond around your leg won't kill you. You have been talking right in here. I got the wrong house. I got the wrong house. God will rule every, oh God will rule every time. What you must understand that God's word is settled in heaven. And when God's word is settled in heaven, remember Mitchell, can't nobody change the word of God that is over your life. God settled some stuff over Pastor Little's life. Before he came into the world, God settled some stuff. And the devil can't overrule it. He doesn't have a court he can take it to. He doesn't have a judge that will listen to him. The lawyer won't even take the case. I'm going to get the right house tonight. Because what God's word is forever. Still in heaven. Y'all trying to go on man's word. Some of y'all trying to go on woman's word. But honey, I'm going on God's word. Because God's word is settled in heaven. I need y'all to repeat that again. You have won again. Look at Pastor Lil and tell him you have won again. Look at Lady Lil and tell him you have won again. 
Amen. Then let's me know that if God allowed you to win before, that he will allow you to win again. And being a child of God, you got to remember your track record. Some of y'all don't remember your track record. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all got to remember your track record. When you are being faced with adversity, you must think on what God has done for you in the past. You got to think about the times when you were going through and then your back was up against the wall and it felt like you weren't going to come out. You got to remember God did it once, that God will do it again. I don't have any witness in gospel tabernacle. Do I have any witness in Ruby, South Carolina? Do I have any witnesses anywhere? God. Remember your track record. Tell your neighbor, you better remember your track record. I say, if God did it once, he'll do it again. Somebody said, why? Because God is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same forevermore. Malachi 3 and 6 says, for I am the Lord. I change now. See, y'all will change. Y'all will be for me today. And tomorrow, y'all won't even like me. Y'all ain't talking right. You will tell me to go ahead and dead. And mama, you're going to tell me to shut up. See, y'all change on people. Oh, they don't like I think you got the wrong person. Y'all got the wrong preacher. Because I didn't come to give y'all no sugar now. Because I come to give you the word of God. I don't care around sugar chicks and all this kind of stuff. I don't bring pacifiers. I don't bring baby diapers. Y'all ain't talking. I ain't talking engineers. People will change up on you. Well, I don't like people changing on me. Y'all know y'all got some stuff y'all don't like. Don't look at me funny. Don't, don't look at me funny. Y'all got some stuff y'all don't like either. I don't like people that change on me. God said, I am the Lord. I change now. So when you think on these things, what is they now to do? When I start thinking about God did it before. That'll cast fear out because when the devil comes to bring fear. When you get into a test and you get into a trial, the first thing you do, you begin to fear. Lord, I'm going to die. My heart beating real fast. I can't hardly breathe. The devil ain't nothing but a liar. Stop your foot on the devil. Now tell him he's nothing but a liar. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love. And a sound mind. The saints of God need to have a sound mind. Some of y'all mind not sound. Hallelujah. I still talk about one again, but we got to work right here. Because when your mind gets sound, you'll know that you're coming out. You won't be walking the floor all night long, pulling that weave out your hair, wiping your fingernail. Y'all ain't talking right. Because you got a sound mind. We got to run on up in here. One is the past tense of win. Win means to gain victory and to prevail. Everybody say prevail. You have already overcome the enemy. And I want you to understand you are not trying to win. You have already won. You got to realize tonight that you are not trying to win, but you have already won. How many of y'all can say that I have already won? You won yesterday. Thank God. You win today, and God knows you will win tomorrow. Every battle that you go through with has already been won. That's why we can praise God now. We don't have to wait until we see the manifestation of the battle being won. But honey, we know down in our know, we know down in our spirit that whatever battle I'm in, the battle is already in the house of God. He wants the believers, the tongue talkers, the Holy Ghost filled people to wake up and realize that the battle has already been won. Do I have any witnesses out there? Are y'all trying to go to sleep? I tell them every Saturday night there is an awakening that's taking place inside of us and God is waking us up to let us know it's time for us to believe the word of God. What's wrong with us, Pastor Patterson? We go to church and we read the Word of God, but we don't have any application of the Word of God. Now, I know I'm talking right. But when you read it and you study it, then you apply it to 
your life. In every given situation, you got to apply the word of God. The devil sitting up and laughing. We come into church every Sunday, every Bible study, every time the church is open, but we don't apply the word. He is saying, y'all just come into church for nothing. This the anniversary. Shut up, this is the anniversary. Come into church for nothing. But when you come to church, you ought to have enough word in you to whatever battle you go into. I already won this battle. I already won this battle. I already won this battle. Hallelujah. See, it's time now. I want to see some application. I'm tired of seeing us come to church and we go back home the same way. And we don't apply the word of God. If God said it, that shows it. It's time for God to start acting like we know something. Act like we know the word of God. Act like we are a believer. Act like we're in the kingdom. Act like God done something for us. Act like God done this. Now sit down, let me work, let me work. In order to win, you've been in some kind of battle. You've been in warfare. And the warfare that you are experiencing is not a physical one. Even though you may have the symptoms in your physical body, my leg hurt, my back hurt, my eyes hurt, the attack is a spiritual one. It is a spiritual one because the enemy sees you as a threat to his kingdom. See, if you're not going through any battle, the devil ain't thinking about you. He know you're not a threat to nobody. You're not even a threat to your aunt. But when you are going through something, the enemy perceives you as being a threat to his kingdom. And he goes to run overtime to do what he can do to get you out of the way. The Bible said, y'all know about the Bible? Do y'all know the Bible? Say the thief comes to steal. Kill. So what he does, he puts out an APB on your life. He said, all points built bulletin. He does everything. He said, bring them back. I want you to bring them back dead. Bring them back wounded. Bring them back crippled. I don't care how you bring them back. Bring them back blind. Bring them back lame. Just bring them back to me. He does everything. He's working. And what he's trying to do is to stop your voice. See, when he realized that your voice is relevant to the kingdom, when he realized that your voice is an instrument in the kingdom, he does everything he can do to silence your voice. You have to wake up and know what the devil is after. He's not after your money. He's not after your husband. He's not after your wife. He's not after your car. He's not after all that junk. He's after your voice that you have in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trying to do everything that he can to stop you. But how many of you know that it will never, never work? Stop your foot on the devil. The devil, it will never, never work. God has the final say with God in your life. I don't care what you're trying to say about pastor, life, evangelist, life, my life. Anybody's life, you don't have the final say about my life. And I can stand, I can say this with pride. You do not have the final say about my life. You can say what you want to say, but honey, God, I'm not paying you a bit more attention than a cat in the moon. Just keep right on talking. Y'all can save your voice. Because God said, He got the final say over your life. You want me to die, you want me to get out of the way, but it will never happen. Psalms 118 and 17 declared, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but tell your name, I shall live. You better speak life over your own life. Open your mouth and say, I shall live. Lift your hands up in the free in this house, I shall live. I shall live. God is not through with you yet. You got some work that you got to do. You are in a battle. And a battle has been fought. 
And the good news, the battle has been won by Jesus Christ. Do y'all know Jesus out there? Some of y'all want to find out that we need to have an altar call. Do I need to stop right now and have an altar call? Everybody here know Jesus? Everybody know Jesus? Everybody know Jesus in the house? It's already been won by Jesus. He won the battle by the shedding his blood on the cross at Calvary. Therefore, the Lord will let you know, since I won the battle, why are you trying to fight? You don't have any need to fight in this battle. The battle is not yours. But I heard 2 Chronicles 20 and 15 say, the battle belongs to the Lord. And when God gave me that, he told me I had to stop. He said, tell these people to stop taking ownership of stuff that don't, that don't even belong to them. Stop saying my battle is not your battle. Stop saying my cancer is not your cancer. Stop saying my heart, my stroke is not your stroke. Y'all ain't like me too good. Y'all, y'all like me a few minutes ago. They don't like me too good now. Stop taking ownership. Ownership. Y'all own the stuff. Y'all own the battle. So if this is your battle, yeah, you go out there and you fight. And see what the devil gonna do with you. He gonna say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who in the world are you? Oh, I'm getting the right house, y'all. Amen. So the battle it belongs to the Lord. And see what y'all got to understand is when you can release the battle and understand that the battle belongs to God, then you understand that God is obligated to make sure that you win. When you understand that the battle belongs to the Lord, it's not your battle. I don't have ownership to it. Then God is obligated to make sure that you win the battle. That's why you can never lose. And I want you to know tonight, since the battle belongs to the Lord, you don't have ownership to it, then that means you are fighting from a fixed fight. Before I got in the rain, the battle was already won. a fixed fight. You already won the battle. The battle was won in heaven. A fixed fight. So when you go through something, don't go with your head down. Go through that. I know I'm coming out of this. Put your square your shoulders back. Right on your seat. I know I'm coming out of this. Square your shoulders back. Of defeat. What does I want y'all to understand? Battles reveal that your enemy, listen, your enemy fully believes that you are capable of winning. The enemy really believes that you are capable of winning. Now, the enemy believes that you can win. Why don't you believe you can win? You can't win in your own strength. But the Bible says in Christ that you win. When you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. When you've been saved and sanctified. And you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I tell y'all a secret? I heard one yes. Can I tell y'all a secret? <laughs> you have been granted access to a champion. Oh, they don't like me. But you have been granted access to a champion who has won and he'll never lose. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Mary's baby. I'm talking about the son of David. 
to keep on waiting. You have to wait because God's word is not over your life. See, God said that you have not fulfilled the purpose and the plan that I have predestined for your life. Talking to the pastor and the late lady and all of us here tonight. Where my atmosphere grabbers? Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. See, God said you can't go nowhere. You can't die. You cannot get out of the picture because you have not fulfilled the plans that I have for your life. No matter what you go through it, you will always win. The Lord said in his word, I will never leave you. No will I forsake you. The Lord said unto us, glory, hallelujah. God said to the champions, he said that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And he said, glory be to God. He said that I will be with thee. He said that through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Then I heard the Lord say, when thou walkest through the fire,